because you know I think that you're you were ahead of your time with a lot of these films. Um, with Meteor Man in specific, though, I guess I always want to ask people, you know, that that very classic artsy question. Like, if there was a question that that film was the answer to, what was the question? And what do you think about the model of Meteor Man in terms of what people are thinking about today in terms of policing and, and being afraid of the law in their neighborhoods? Well, well you know, uh, with all my movies, I plant seeds, it's a Trojan horse. You know, there's other things going on. Like the five heartbeats was really, I wanted to create images of black men that we had never seen before. And I used mm -hmm. the backdrop of music, five guys, but five different personalities so that you can say, oh, I identify with Duck, I identify with JT. Oh, I'm Eddie Kane. Oh, I'm choir boy. That, you know, when we think about men of color, we always had the stereotypes of being the hood or the, you know, and I just, I wanted to share something like that. With, mm -hmm. um, with Meteor Man, when I think about what's going on now with the protests and all these new leaders that are emerging, the theme of Meteor Man was really, we have the power, like once I lost my superpowers and I was just a, a mere mortal, that's when I became a real hero because mm -hmm. I said, I'll go down there and fight them with no power. You're going to go down there? Yeah, because it's about the community. And yes. then uh, part of the, the, the thing with the community was we could band together and make a difference, but everybody is in their houses afraid and no one wants to speak up about what's going on in the community. So when I see the protests going on around the world globally, yeah, we did that. We came together, all of us, to say, let's make a difference. This violence, get your foot off my neck. So when mm -hmm. I hit the media man, the, the, the community really saves the day. It's not about the police. It's not about the community says, you know what? We got to stand up because this brother is speaking his real truth. And so when you plant seeds like that, maybe there are people in neighborhoods that go, you know what? It's not... It's not anti-police, but how can we do better ourselves first? And I, I think that's the good thing that has come out of all this protest is all these new leaders, new voices that are really speaking up that we're probably afraid to speak up. I think it's so awesome what you just said about the five heartbeats being like a secret vehicle to introduce new images of, of you know, ways black males can be because... You know, you're working to counteract stereotypes. A lot of Hollywood shuffle the same way, working to counteract stereotypes. Um, I wanted to ask you, what effect do you think dismantling stereotypes in Hollywood movies, what effect do you think it has on the world at large? Well, I mean, here's the thing. When you get on an elevator and uh, a woman, a white woman may clutch her purse or look at you crazy in Walmart or wherever you are, part of that is based on the images that they've seen of black men. So if they see the black man that is like, you know, like, give me your purse, you know, and you see that again on every cop show, every TV show, uh, they go in their head, black danger, and then now we got mask on too. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> right. it's kind of like, you can't see a person smile, so it's like, good morning, good morning. You know, <laughs> like, I take my wallet. You know, so I, I think it is years of you know, it goes back to birth of a nation. You yes. know, they planted seeds back then that the black men are going to rape white women and do harm to the world, and so. Um, Hollywood does play a role in all of the, the stuff that we're going through because if you see, you know, scary looking black men on the screen all the time and you see somebody, it doesn't care if they have a nice, you know, like, here's the thing. The thing in Atlanta that pissed me off the most was that the uh, uh, Richard was just a lovable drunk. He was like mm. a Richard Pryor sketch drunk. He was like, officer, you know, I live down there. And if you just let me, mm. and he was a lovable Richard, that was a Richard Pryor sketch that went wrong. And then all of a sudden he's running, his car is right there. Mm. What you, you could go, uh, let the guy run, please. Uh, run plate 90132, you know, and he's right there to shoot that guy, I'm like going, eek, you know, he wasn't even harmless. The, the thing that I would say is that you talk about what, what my son calls in sports muscle memory. Mm -hmm. 
when I watched that video, where it took the turn was they said, let's put the handcuffs on. And then that's when he went to George Floyd, like, oh, my God, I might die right now. And he woke up out of sleepiness, out of drunk to that. But he, you know, so that's why I'm saying stereotypes. The guy is a lovable drunk. He was just a guy who had too much to drink. And he was, and he, and he, and it's like comedy. He was so nice. Officer, excuse me, sir. I think very much. I live over there. And he was just being the nicest. And then they shot him. So, so I think the stereotypes play into all of that. Yes, indeed. Um, And I, I kind of wanted to jump off of that to, I guess, you know, there's this, come up in in a kind of a way like a lot of people are obviously there's an eye on representation and diversity in entertainment in the last couple of years and it's taken on many different forms you know there's been a lot of lip service to it and some people are putting their money where their mouth is and it's happening at this per- a particular pace we had ernie hudson on the show uh, a couple days ago you know and he's had a very long established career and has had to kind of jump around to what was available you know and now there's this come up and it's not only about uh, being able to call people out, I guess, in some sense of, of how things went, but also that there are more and more black voices that are out there making all kinds of stuff. And I guess I was curious about what your feelings about that are, you know, like b- based on what you've seen uh, and how it's changed. And then also I wanted to ask you a little bit about some of these films that are kind of being rethought, like Gone with the Wind, there are images that are being, you know, recalled like Aunt Jemima and stuff like that. Do you think that, that is going to actually cause any kind of difference or do you think it's a it's kind of a stunt or a combination of both? You know, I, I think it's a beautiful time uh, for awareness. I think uh, I applaud everybody that now is having some kind of sensitivity to these images. You know, I was thinking about today, like Aunt Jemima, and that's like, when they did the photo shoot, did they have a stylist for her? Mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was like, you know, it's just like, you know, like she said, no, I want my hair like Bessie Smith. And it was like, no, 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 you don't put the rag on. You don't have the rag on. It's gonna be perfect. You know, they didn't huh. give her a choice in how she looked because I was reading. There was this thing online today. The woman was talking about how dare they take down Aunt Jemima. And and part of the thing to me was that. Um, they wanted a certain image of us, you know, Mm -hmm. like this woman in the kitchen cooking and hardworking and all of that. And they said she was, you know, very rich woman for her recipe and all of that. But I think this is a good time in history because what are we teaching our kids and what are, what do the images represent? Because there's a certain time where we go like, well, that's okay. That statue, that's okay. Aunt Jemima, why couldn't she be fly? Why couldn't she look Mm -hmm. like an entrepreneur like they did the ladies on Virginia Slim and she had a certain look and swag. But if they say we want a certain image, we want to keep that image. So I, I, I really feel this is a good time right now. I, mm. I, I, I see a lot of talented, you know, uh, content creators that are saying things and I just see all these new voices being born. So for me, you know, being a pioneer when, you know, Keenan and I were fighting for images and just fighting mm-hmm. to say what we had to say with no money, I think now is a, is a beautiful time. I think what's coming out of this, like even with you guys right now having this conversation, this is beautiful that you guys have a platform that you're educating people because I, I don't really say, you know, bad guys, good guys, bad guys. I think there are people that need to be educated Mm. so that you can say, that's not cool. Like if the, if the Washington Redskins is offensive to native American people, change it. Don't go like, it's not, it's not offensive. You know, it's like, no, if they're feeling sensitive, certain kind of way, take it down. You know, when I hear the stuff about the, um, you know, the, the Kung flu to all Asian friends of mine, it is very offensive. Don't say it, you know, you're going to start a fight. And the wrong, you know, so I just think that there is sensitivity training that needs to happen. And I think it comes out of action. And there's a lot of action going on right now because of all these protests, you know. So I I, I think this is a lot of good is going to come out of this. 